So when I was a kid, I think I wanted to be a dancer, a modern dancer, sort of, but with a partner, like 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 Ginger Rogers with Fred Astaire or Vera Allen. I, I, uh, I thought it was really wonderful. So that's I thought that's what I wanted to be. Yeah. I, and I went to the academy of the, the art academy, and I had six hours of dance uh, every week actually which was quite exhausting because I went to the French school which was all day long and then in the evening from from uh, four to seven twice a week I had to go to to the dance academy and uh, uh, I think I think it was wonderful but then you know when I was 14 my uh, my uh, Russian dance teacher said I had to decide if I wanted to go on to be serious you know go forever to the academy and basically do my high school diploma there or if I want to uh, not to become a dancer and my my Russian uh, teacher said well your neck is not long enough really to be a prima ballerina <laughs> so uh, I think that was perhaps a nice way of her telling me or not so nice way of telling me I am not uh, I'm not. I don't. I'm not the quality to become a real good professional dancer. But that was very late in life. Actually, I was always interested in how food is produced and how it is made. I, uh, I, from very small on, when my parents went to the farmhouse, a working farmhouse during the war, I remember watching always the farmers, you know, how they hate and how they cut the hay and how she sep milked the cows and how she separated the milk from the cream and how she made butter and how she made her bread and how they cooked their lunch. I mean, I was always interested in food or, or how the chicken laid the eggs. I remember, you know, being three years old, I even have the picture of me sitting, squatting next to the chicken, waiting for the egg to come out. I mean, it was fascinating for me. And I was artistic, so what I decided, I wanted to be an interior designer. And so to be an interior designer, I had to go to technical college to make up all my degrees that I needed to have to go uh, to architectural school. Because in Austria, you have to go to architectural uh, school before you can go become an interior designer so I went to to the technical college and I took math and then I took something called uh, uh, modern Reichen technique which is basically uh, um, you know learning about computers and so uh, uh, IT and so I, I uh, did that for a while and uh, I thought it was really very boring and <laughs> then my cousin who worked for IBM told me look you have no chance to be anything of importance in I mean this is this was like the 60s the early 60s and uh, for, as a woman what you will do you will just you know punch the cards you know how you had to punch in the old system the computers you had there were cards that you have to insert in the and so you will only punch cards. So I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. But luckily, luckily at that time, I met uh, on uh, on a trip to Yugoslavia in uh, Dubrovnik. I met uh, a French journalist who became my husband two years later. So uh, that's what brought me to this country. And then being married to an, a Frenchman, I had to learn how to cook really fast. So I never... I never went to a, a professional uh, cooking school, but I, I learned uh, through practice. You know, I learned on how do you say that on the hoof, or I learned on, you know, on just by doing it every day. Well, I, I think I think from the beginning on, I was always interested in 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 interior design. That's why I wanted to study study it. I remember at my parents' home house, I had two rooms that I continuously decorated and changed and also helped my mother change the apartment because our apartment was very big and it was geared to servants and as uh, you know my parents got older they couldn't afford all the servants so I wanted to make it more practical for her and then uh, uh, I, I don't know I just always I always loved to change things to make them good looking and practical and uh, well uh, the funny thing is that I went here in the States to uh, uh, to call the, Inter the International School of Interior Design 
and it was just down the street here from the restaurant. It was on Sheraton Circle. And what is now my main dining room in the restaurant, I had classes in that same room. And what is now downstairs, the bar, used to be a deli. It used to be called the Georgetown Deli, and I bought my sandwich there. Now, can you believe this? Isn't that unbelievable? And I'm back here, and this is my space. I think you absolutely had it right. <laughs> when I, I, I started, basically it was by, by chance, I discovered how the agricultural practices are done in this country. That, that uh, I called up, I looked in the yellow pages and I called up a farm. You know, they were listed farm where you can buy half a beef, a quarter of a beef, whatever. So I called up the farm and a woman answers and she was the farmer's wife and she said, well, you know, you will like my beef because I give them corn, and, you know, and sort of fatten them up so that they are really marbled and, you know, very tender. And it, I sort of, sort of was astonished and freaked out and I said, corn? I mean, where I come from, you know, they eat grass, they don't eat corn. And so I said, how can they eat corn? And said, well, they really shouldn't eat it, but I give them antibiotics and I give them growth promoting hormones so that they can fatten up more and eat more, you know, and the corn helps them fatten up faster and the antibiotics help them digest it because they couldn't digest it. So I was completely shocked and then I, I saw another ad in the yellow pages because then there was no Google and uh, and I just call, saw there's from natural beef. There's a farmer that does natural beef in Pennsylvania and I called him up and he gave me a whole list of things that he didn't do that conventional farmers did like fumigating the carcasses, you know, the, the antibiotics, the growth problem, and, and it went on and on, and I thought, wow, this is unbelievable, you know, what's happening here. And so I researched and I found that the chickens were also manipulated with hormones thing, and, I, and then when I looked into local farms and I drove out in the country and, and uh, I researched and I found out that the vegetables also have, you know, they, they don't use growth promoting hormones, but they use a lot of pesticides. And nobody did composting anymore and all artificial fertilizer. And especially here in this climate, lots of fungicide. And uh, now we have MGMOs. So I, I thought, wow, this is really not good because where I grew up, people really, and my father always told me, you know, health is the most important thing you have in your life and you better take care of it and no money in the world can buy it for you. And I thought, you know, these people here look really unhealthy, you know, they have so many diseases that in Austria they didn't have, you know, first of all, there are many of them overweight and obese and cardiovascular problems and they have triple or quadruple pybuses and a lot of cancer is happening and so I thought I'm sure it has something to do with what they put in their body. Yeah. Well, I, you know, this is my 36 years, so I'm open since 36 years to so have a lot of loyal clientele and from this loyal clientele their children come and now their children, children come because 36 years is a long time. But I have a lot of, so I have people from, people with health concerns. I have people with health concerns, people with dietary restrictions, I have people that for that many environmental organizations, I have uh, lots of Europeans that come, organizations uh, that have their board meetings here, their board dinners, uh, uh, Valerie Jarrett comes in a couple of weeks with all uh, women from Congress, she does this once a year. Um, you know, the Obamas were here, the Clintons used to come a lot, now less, you know, I don't know how much they are in Washington. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I think that uh, from the Hill I get regularly uh, congressmen or congress uh, uh, um, uh, representative. I mean, I, I think it's a really a mixed batch. I mean, when you come into the, when you walk through the dining room, you see young couples that uh, are on a special date. You see families that uh, that uh, you know exactly they're out of towners and the people that live here wanted them to bring them here. Uh, and I said, you see some people from the hill that are here. I mean, like, uh, you know, some people tell me, oh, when I was at your restaurant, Carolyn Kennedy was eating uh, just next to me or, 
you know, I, I, we were here when the Obamas were here, or, you know, they're always... Uh, uh, something exciting going on or they recognize a congressman or, or, the, or, you know, people, I think more people now are aware of the importance of organic food and uh, so they, uh, they really make an effort to find a restaurant who gives them what is good for them and uh, they just trust me because I'm I'm certified organic since 1999 and I think that uh, gives them sort of the feeling that they can trust me that really the food they eat here is uh, clean wholesome nutritious and they like the way I prepare it because I don't use any cream or butter I use only olive oil or sunflower oil and of course, lots of butter, eggs, and sugar for the desserts, but not for the main courses. And I give them lots of vegetables, you know. Uh, it's not like you have to buy a piece of protein and then you have to, have to order next to it the vegetables. It comes on a plate. So basically, you are inspired to eat your vegetables. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, well, first of all, for slightly for the organic, organic, there are only perhaps four or five restaurants in the whole country. I was the first, I had to create the standards with Oregon Tills. Um, I think it's very difficult to be certified organic. I have to prove that at least 95% what comes into the restaurant comes from certified organic sources. So, uh, uh, you know, that gives you a limit of uh, distributors, wholesalers and farmers and, and how to use. So, so uh, there's that. But I have to say that I try to inspire a lot as a chef to be more local and more organic. I used to organize bus tours in in the in the early 90s for uh, people to come, uh, uh, you know, for chefs and invited local chefs, and I brought them out to Pennsylvania to organic uh, farms so they would see, you know, what you, they can buy. You know, many didn't even realize you can buy local food. I mean, that was a new concept. So, you know, and I inspired the farmer's market here. So I think that uh, I try to spread the word about uh, a more healthful way of eating and living. What to do? Well, I, I think that uh, what I always wanted to do, and I... Uh, I, uh, I wish I would uh, uh, have the money to do it, is uh, make basically an organic McDonald's, a healthy fast food place. Because I think, uh, you know, a hamburger is a wonderful thing to eat. And, uh, uh, it, and but the way it is done right now, it's, it has bread that has no nutritional value, it has iceberg lettuce that has no nutritional value, uh, the meat is, uh, I don't know what the meat is, and, uh, and you know, it has slapped on it all this ketchup, which is all sugar. And so if you turn this around and make all these things more uh, healthier, you know, more wholesome, you know, with a whole grain bun and with really lots of romaine lettuce maybe and uh, a mayonnaise that that is done with good oil and and uh, fresh eggs and, uh, uh, you know, a tomato that is actually ripe <laughs> and has uh, some flavor or some ketchup that is not all sugar and, and a good mustard. And I, I think you can make a very nice uh, uh, hamburger. And I think, uh, I think I would like to give it to people. It could not be as cheap as McDonald's, of course, but I would like to be able to give it to people so everybody can afford it. And uh, and uh, I think that's missing still in the organic industry is, uh, is a, a fast food that is affordable to everybody.